Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zoe and I'm so happy that you clicked on today's video. So it is now April, meaning a new month, which means wrap up videos are coming out and I am so excited to talk about all nine books that I read in March. I definitely did not have as good of a reading month in March as I was hoping to, especially considering that I read 16 books in February, but I unfortunately fell into a slump about halfway through the month and not to name names this early on, but it was definitely because of a specific book that I read during the month, which I will get to later on in the video, but I'm out of the slump now. Things are all good. I was able to push through it and still finish a good amount of books. Nine is still a really big number. And as always, these wrap-ups are seriously just for fun. Honestly, if you read one book in a month, if you read half a book in a month, that's great. We're all just here to read and have fun. It does not matter how many books you read in a month. Everybody is reading at their own pace and that's great. So with all that being said, let's just get into all nine books that I read during March. So I started the month off reading an arc that I really needed to get reviewed for NetGalley and I read Take a Bow, Noah Mitchell by Tobias Madden. It's about these two boys who are really good friends online through gaming, but they don't know who the other person is in real life. And then one of them finds out somehow that the other one is in this musical theater production. So he goes and joins it and secretly knows that the other person is the gamer, but the other boy doesn't know that, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a little bit of like sneaking around. It gets a little bit messy in there, but it's a really cute romance. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun because I love musical theater, obviously, if you can see the frames above me. And it's also written by an Australian author, so everything was in Australia, which I found really fun because I personally am like fascinated by Australia. So I actually had a really good time reading this book and I didn't even think I was gonna like it. So it was quite a nice surprise to start the month off with and I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I read The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. This is one that I have been waiting so long to read. It's been on hold on Libby for months and months and months and it was finally available. I was so excited because I absolutely loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife when I read that last year. So I was very stoked, but this book unfortunately was not everything that In My Dreams I Hold a Knife was. It was definitely still a good thriller mystery book. It had a lot of good plot twists, a lot of different like surprising elements to it but what the story kind of centered around was not something that I was super interested in and honestly that's my fault because I went into the book blind and if I had like researched it a little bit beforehand I probably would have chosen maybe to not read it but with that being said it was by no means a bad book it just wasn't something that was super interesting to me so because of that I gave it three stars. Next we have the book that ultimately put me in my reading slump um and it's not because it was a bad book, it's because I read it at the wrong time. I knew I was not in the mood to read a fantasy and I still went ahead and read A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab because in February I read A Darker Shade of Magic. I loved it so much and I wanted to know what happened next. So I jumped into the second book, even though I told myself not to. And did I end up regretting it? Yeah, a little bit. I thought the book was good. It had like a competition element to it, which was very interesting to me. I loved seeing more of our characters from the first book and getting a little bit of a deeper look into their minds. Um, but the book was just not, it was not being read at the right time for me. So it was very hard to get through. I found myself not wanting to read ever and I would read like five pages at a time. So if I'd read it at a different time, I think I would have enjoyed it more. So I just gave it three stars because it did still have good elements to it. It just was not right at the time. I'm so sorry about my cat. Anyway, so three stars. And then I read Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. I'm trying to work my way through her backlist and this one finally was available on Libby again after months of waiting and I was so excited. I went into it not knowing anything about it as I tend to do and I was actually really pleasantly surprised. I didn't know what I would think. All I knew about this book was that it involved music because obviously it has a guitar on the front and that alone was enough to make me excited to read it. And it turns out it's about this girl, Sydney, who lives in this apartment across the way from this guy who plays guitar. He's in a band, his name is Ridge. And every night Ridge would sit on his balcony and play his guitar and Sydney would go out on her balcony and listen. And then eventually some things happen and Sydney ends up living with Ridge. And obviously it's a romance, so that was cute. There is a trope in it that I was not a fan of. Spoiler if you wanna hear, it's a cheating trope. And I thought that was going to make me absolutely hate the book, 
but honestly, the way that it was done, I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun story. And we saw something in the book that I feel like I don't read about very often. Ridge is deaf and his girlfriend was hard of hearing and he had to use sign language in the book. And I just found that to be a really interesting element. And I was really happy to be able to read a book with some different representation in it. And it made me want to go read more books like that. So I gave this one four out of five stars. Next, I read I Can Fix That by Juliana Smith. By this point, I was starting to get out of my reading slump because these fluffy romances were really helping me. And this book was so cute. I loved Juliana Smith's Christmas book, Baggage Claim, when I read it back in December, and I was very excited about this. And it was just so freaking good. It was so cute. It follows June, who is this first grade teacher, and she has a house that needs some fixing up. So she calls in Grant to help her fix the house, and along the way, they fall in love. And it was so adorable. It was just a very happy, lighthearted romance. It was closed door, which is great. I love a good closed door romance, as I always say. And it was just exactly what I needed in the moment. So I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Then I read The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This is a book that I've wanted to read for so long and I finally did. And honestly, I was a little disappointed. I feel like this book is so hyped up. Everybody loves it so much. It's a closed door romance about a bodyguard, obviously. But in this book, the female main character is the bodyguard and not the guy. And I thought that was really fun to have it be like the opposite. And I really liked the characters. They were really funny. For some reason, I pictured the entire security team as characters from The Office, which really like kept me interested. It was just very funny to me. It definitely just made it more comical in my head. But as far as the romance went, I felt like it was very lacking and like there wasn't even really any romance until the very, very, very end. So I felt a little disappointed because I went into this thinking it was like a romance romance and then it wasn't. So I was slightly disappointed but I still enjoyed it, so I gave it three and a half stars. Next, I got an arc that I was not expecting. After reviewing I Can Fix That on my bookstagram, Juliana Smith, the author, messaged me and offered me an arc of her new book coming out in May called Per My Last Email. And I was so excited. I could not believe that she sent me an arc. I was just over the moon. So obviously I read it immediately and I just loved it. It is a workplace romance. It's friends to lovers. And it was just so cute, you guys. It is definitely a slow burn. Very, very slow burn, like all the way to the end slow burn. But it was done so well that it was worth it. And I just loved it so much. I don't want to give too much away because I feel like this is a book that's really good to go into blind and just kind of take it all in. But I loved it so much. I gave it five stars and I highly recommend reading it when it comes out in May. So then I read Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. This is a YA fantasy that follows this kingdom that has this fever going around that nobody can understand why people get it or how, but the only resource that can stop it is this really rare flower. And it was a really, really interesting story. I'm just starting to get into fantasy and I really loved reading about this kingdom, this different land. And I thought it was so good. I instantly started the second book when I finished it because I was so obsessed with this book. I flew through it. It's like a little over 400 pages and I read it in a little over a day because it was just that good. Like I could not put it down, couldn't stop thinking about it when I wasn't reading it. So good. I feel like it's very underrated. I never hear about this book, but I highly recommend it if you like fantasy or YA because it was so good and it was really easy to understand. So I also gave this book five stars. And then the last book that I read in March was Maybe Now by Colleen Hoover. This was another book that came through on Libby, um, just coincidentally right after Maybe Someday. And I didn't honestly know if I would enjoy it, but I read it anyway because I didn't want it to get returned after waiting so long. And oh my gosh, it was so good. I feel like Colleen Hoover is very good at writing sequels, even when books don't need them and making them just really happy. All the loose ends were already tied up in Maybe Someday. And yet somehow she added on to the story for Maybe Someday and made it even better. And I was just obsessed. I think I liked this one better than Maybe Someday, which I was not expecting. It was just so cute. The end was absolutely perfect. It just made me smile the whole time. I was super giddy and I loved it so much. I gave it, <laughs> I gave it four stars. And if you're reading Maybe Someday and you're not sure if you should read the other books, I highly recommend Maybe Now because I personally thought it was such a great sequel. So I feel like this video was a little bit chaotic between my cat and just everything going on, but those were the nine books that I read in March. 
I feel like despite my reading slump, it was a really good reading month. I really enjoyed most of the books that I read, which I feel like is great, especially when I'm in the middle of a reading slump. So if you've read any of these books and have any opinions, I would love to hear about them. And also feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. That helps so much. And as always, if you want to be friends, my Instagram and Goodreads will be linked down below. I've noticed recently that I feel like mostly what I post are TBR videos and wrap up videos and I feel like that needs to change. So I'm debating starting to post twice a week every once in a while if I have extra videos because I want to start adding more content than just those videos to my channel. So I have a lot of fun ideas but if there's anything you want to see from me feel free to let me know and yeah that was the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.